it is finally here. Banner Lord Online literally came out of nowhere yesterday and my video that I made on it has just completely blown me away with the positive reception and you guys are enjoying it. Since that video released, the server got up from 200 to 400 players, which is more than we've seen in any Banner Lord server so far in its lifetime. This mod is completely changing the way the game functions and my, I can't wait to explore everything that it's got to offer as more updates come out. But first, one of the main things people have been asking me is, oh look, I downloaded the mod it's cool it's great click the link in the description once again if you want to check it out but what do i do i have no idea what i'm doing at the start so in this video i'm going to be giving you a quick overview of the early tutorials in the game how you can move your way through it and the best ways to get the most amount of money possible in the fastest time so without further ado this is the complete and ultimate guide to getting started in battlelord online First of all, once you've created your character and you're in the server, you'll be introduced to Godric. Godric is the fellow NPC that will help you start your journey in this new multiplayer found world of Calradia. He's going to ask you to go to a nearby village and earn 500 denars. Now, I might add, you don't have to do any of these tutorial missions. It's actually really possible to leave all the tutorial missions behind and just go on your way, exploring the world and trying to find your own way through making money, getting troops and fighting looters. However, I would really recommend them since it does give you a really good landing platform in terms of money at the beginning. You're going to struggle to earn hundreds if not thousands of denars in early game unless you do these tutorial missions. So Godric's going to ask you to go to a nearby village. Any of the villages work. So once you go into the village, you'll find a village headman, the guy that owns these farms. Speaking to him, you can ask him for work in the field. And of course, he will kindly oblige. Now the game tells you that they produce wheat. The growing requires hilling, planting, watering and harvesting. And it tells you how much you gain from doing each of these things. For hilling, all you have to do is pick up a hoe, go and find a patch of ground that hasn't been touched and click F to hill the soil. If you want to do some watering, go and grab a water jug, go to the nearby river and fill it up. Each water jug has six uses before it needs refilling. If you want to do sowing, go to the cart, pick up seeds and put them in the watered and healed soil. And once those green wheat sprouts has turned yellow, that means it's ripe enough to harvest. You can harvest four bits of wheat before you have to go and dump it all in the shed and that's you pretty much done. Now as I mentioned, when you talk to the village guy, he tells you how many denars that you're going to receive through each action. So if you do some healing, you'll get 15 denars each time. If you do watering, you'll get 30 denars each time. And let me just give a quick disclaimer. This isn't entirely clear. It's kind of true, but at the same time, it's not really. See, once you do your jobs and you go back to the man to ask for your payment, it's calculated through each full harvest rotation. So if you get a hoe and heal the ground one time and you go back to the guy, you'd expect yourself to get 15 denars right? Well, not exactly. If you heal the ground one time and then someone else comes and plants the seeds, then harvests the wheat and then go and take it back, then you get your 15 denars. You only get paid once the full crop has been handed back in and you get paid regarding to how much you contributed to that crop cycle. There are tutorials out there that say it is per action, but you only get paid for that action if the crop has been fully harvested and taken back to the shed. I found this out the hard way by doing so many trips with water jugs back and forth, back and forth, and then I went back to the guy and I got paid nothing because all the crops that I had watered hadn't yet been harvested and handed back in meaning yes I'd done the work but technically I hadn't contributed anything to a full cycle because the cycle hadn't finished so then I did a retest I did one trip with a water jug and I watered a certain corner of the field then someone came along once they had grown and harvested them then took them back to the shed then after he'd taken the wheat that I had watered back to the shed I then went to collect my funds and I got 300 denars instead it's a little bit misleading from what it tells you from from the payment guy, but I hope this clears it up for a lot of people. Once you return to Godric in Zeneca, you go to the tavern and you can speak to him. He'll give you 1500 denars on top of what you've already made, which is an incredible starting point for getting some decent money in order to actually defend yourself out in the world. He'll then tell you that he wants you to go into town to find a trader. Here, you need to get a weapon, a tier 2 helmet, and a tier 3 chest piece. Once you've bought all those things, go back to Godric and he gives you a bit of extra cash as well. But then, comes the final tutorial mission where you've got to go and fight bandit camp you've got to go off and find three recruits to come and join your party but be wary you don't recruit troops the same way that you do it in a single player native campaign here you have to take a walk around the streets and you'll find npcs standing chatting to each other walking up to them and you'll find their recruits and you can ask them to join your party once you have three of these recruits go back to godric and he'll tell you to meet him near the bandit camp with your men you've got to take down these pesky looters now it's a pretty 
easy fight at the beginning. Godric brings a few of his own troops, and he has some decent armor as well, so it's not too tricky to take out the first bandit camp. I mean, it's not supposed to. It's really a tutorial mission here. But once you do that, go back to the tavern, meet Godric again, and it'll give you 2,000 denars, and that will be the completion of the tutorial. Once you've done this, you should have a few thousand denars, which is plenty, in order to start your game in Bannerlord Online. Some of the best ways to make early money, though, if doing the full tutorial isn't really your thing, is to, like I said, do the farming or go into the arena. Go into the arena where you'll talk to the arena captain, he'll put you in the next round. Of course, you've got to win in order to gain money, but you'll get 50 denars every victory. You might think that doesn't sound that much, but rounds can go pretty fast, and especially if you're fighting in team games, you tend to rack up money pretty quickly, since even if you die, the rest of your team can still win and you get the money from that. Some people might say that doing caravans is a really good early game thing to do, but I would have to put that off. If you've done the tutorial, it's definitely possible to get into being merchants and doing caravan trades. However, if you don't do the tutorial, it's going to take you a lot of time and money in order to buy the cargo for trading. You see, caravans work with taking certain bits of cargo from the trader to other cities, but the problem is this cargo costs a lot to start with. The cheapest ones will be around 500 to 600 denars, and they can go all the way up to three, four grand. Of course, the more expensive cargo you buy, the more money you're going to get once you've delivered it. However, as a party, you don't have much space at the beginning, so you're going to have to buy a mule or a horse to join you in order to carry the heavier cargo, which again is another couple grand. So all in all, to start trading, you're going to need about 3,000 denars. That's not even taken into account the troops you're going to need. Cargo missions take ages, especially the higher priced ones. Some of them for me took 20 to 30 minutes to take stuff from one side of the map to the other. Remember, this Battle Lord Online is always moving. There's no fast forwarding, meaning you have to walk walk in real time to certain places on the map to deliver your cargo and on the way you're going to get attacked by looters so you're going to need a number of troops to help defend your caravan maybe if there's some other players that you're teaming up with you can do this a bit faster but really doing caravan and cargo missions at the beginning is not all that viable i'd recommend getting three or four grand together with about five or six troops in your party before you start doing proper caravan missions especially the long range ones but that's pretty much it for a complete guide for the early game stuff if you follow this you'll get a good understanding of how this mod works and how you can then proceed later on. Of course, killing looters does give you a little bit of money, but at this point in time, you can't sell stuff on the market, so you'll end up with an inventory full of tunics and ragged cloths that you can't really sell on. But I'll be making plenty more tutorials and videos on Bannerlord Online, and there'll be a very interesting one coming in the next few days as we get a clan together and we make as much money as humanly possible. So please, subscribe to the channel if you want to stick around for that sort of thing. But until then, I will see you in the next one.